who doesn't like fire trucks. They're big, heroic, and they're red. You know, well, back in the 80s, they started painting them yellow, but I think we're past that now. And if you work with Pierce Manufacturing, they can also be electric, as is the case with their Volterra pumper. Zero emissions, zero compromise. I had a chance to talk with Chris at their road rally of fire trucks that came through Michigan. Uh, Chris Breaker, Senior Sales Manager um, at Pierce Manufacturing for Electrification and Aerials. Yeah, and this, you have a road rally going on. You just came up from Ohio, I believe, with Ohio a whole bunch was, of... It was our last stop. We came up through. It started in April right after FDIC, and we traveled the eastern seaboard to this point. And this fire truck is running, but it's we can have a normal conversation. What's special about this one? This one actually is our electrification vehicle. It's uh, Volterra. Um, it's the it's fully electric. Um, at that point, when the elect the charge actually goes away. The uh, engine will kick on and seamlessly transition whether you're pumping water or rolling down the road. So it really doesn't give up um, any of the performance. Um, if we do have a low battery, it's still going to run on diesel and have peak performance. Normally when we're transporting, we're not flat bedding it. We're actually driving it from place to place. This particular truck is probably, I didn't check lately, but it's probably got about seven or 8,000 miles on it. So where are the batteries, where's the engine and the motor, and how does it work? I guess high level. Oh, so <laughs> basically you have a, a traditional engine. The engine is quite a bit smaller. It's a B-series Cummins that we use uh, for that portion of the energy. And that is actually moved forward in the cab, affording more uh, room in the back of the cab. Um, what's powering the truck right now is the battery system. So those batteries are located right behind the cab in a protected area down low for a side crash. If, if that were to occur, everything is sacrificial from this point down on both sides of the truck. In the rear of the truck, if you get hit from the back end, if you're on an accident scene, um, actually no damage should occur to those batteries either. So right now, the, under the battery power, the, the electric motors are in the transmission. The transmission is an EMI VT, a variable transmission uh, that allows us to Utilize it in both modes, whether it's electric or internal combustion. But I did get a look at their electromechanical infinitely variable transmission at CES earlier this year. The transmission is sandwiched between two electric motors. They are three phase AC motors sourced from Dana TM4. The large yoke connects to a drive shaft that goes to the rear axles to make the wheels go round and round. The smaller yoke is a power takeoff that goes to a pump to, you know, put out fires. Should the firefighters need more operating time than the batteries can deliver, a diesel engine is mounted ahead of the EMIVT and it would start up to provide power to the pump. The diesel engine is a little smaller than normal because it doesn't have to do everything. It just has to kick in as needed. Parallel drive system, basically what that does is it allows us to power the back side of the truck, if you will, from the pump back, whether it's on internal combustion or on electric, but not both. Mm. So it's really one system or the other. That's why it's a plug-in electric vehicle with a redundant uh, ICE engine on board. Does the driver, do they choose whether they're on electric or combustion or does it do it automatically or depends it really depends if they if they choose to ch change it from one mode to the other they can do that from within the cap mm -hmm. so it's really on that transmission shift tower um, one button will uh, incur that changeover um, even in normal operations if you're on a scene for an extended period of time if you're pumping water the battery level will go down to a certain state of charge the truck will automatically shift into the engine mode at that point, it, it starts the engine, gets it warmed up. Um, once the engine is at its peak performance, it will rev up to match the driveline speed in the transmission. So if you're on the end of a hose line, you're not going to feel any difference in that transition from one uh, mode to the other. Same way with driving down the road. Mm -hmm. You won't notice, other than some of the performance that you would normally get with an electric vehicle, um, it's still going to get you from place to place, um, whatever that speed limitation is on the truck. And what's the speed limit, I guess, for, for highway use? Is it... For normal trucks, it's about 65, 68. A fully charged battery, is there a range spec that you give? or It It not... really depends on what the terrain is, how much energy is being um, 
used with that with the battery. So if it's a hilly area, it's going to be less. If it's going to be a flat area, it's going to be more. But typically, um, you're going to go 60 to 80 miles on a on a full charge on the batteries. There's a, one of the test units is actually in Arizona. Um, one of the, the other test unit is up in Calgary for the mm -hmm. cold. There is also one in Portland, Oregon, and that one is actually for the hilly terrain and the high call volume. Well, the management system, the thermal management system on board is actually a separate system that heats and cools the batteries to keep them at their peak performance. So that also ties into the longevity of the batteries, um, just like with any automotive type EV that's out there. Do you happen to know how fast it charges? It depends on the charger size. If you've got a supercharger, 150K KW, um, fully depleted, it's about 90 minutes to charge. So really the idea is, to, is on an average call run to go out, do your call, come back and have reserve left in there so it won't take as long basically to recharge. You just plug it in like you normally would plug in your um, shoreline into the truck. There's two battery packs in here that the capacity on those is increased from our test engines. Um, that's at 246 kilowatts. So that's what we're, we sized it to the call run volume that was typical for a, an engine or a, a fire truck basically. I had the chance to uh, visit CES. Oshkosh had a booth there and I did a kind of a walkthrough and okay. spoke about this for not enough time. So I was, I was excited when I could come out and see it and appreciate you standing out on the uh, hot pavement for this. It's a, it's a warm one today. It is. Welcome yeah. to the road rally. <laughs> but the air conditioning inside works great. Uh, nice. every, people are taking advantage of that. So <laughs> thanks again for the overview. Um, fantastic. I love seeing new technology Thank like you. this.